Hi everyone, welcome to the Explorer. This is a listening practice, lesson one. Please print out the question paper using the link in the description box. Listen to a conversation between Rosie and her friend Ben. As you listen, choose the correct answer for questions 1 to 4. You now have 30 seconds to look at the questions. Now listen carefully and choose your answers. Hi Ben, I heard that you went shopping at the new mall yesterday. Are all the shops open for business yet? Yes, I was told that the new mall is the biggest one in the Klang Valley, so I wanted to check it out. Most of the shops are already open, except for about two or three shops which are still under renovation. You should visit this new mall. The decorations are fantastic. There was a large crowd though, but the mall is very spacious, so it was still good to walk around. I enjoyed window shopping there, as there are quite a variety of shops. The new mall is a distance away from your house. Did you drive there? I hate the hassle of getting a parking spot, so I didn't drive there. I thought of taking the LRT initially, but my classes ended later than expected. So, instead of spending time walking to the LRT station and waiting for the LRT, I took a Grab car instead. Knowing you, I'm sure you did more than just window shop. What did you buy? There were so many sales and opening promotions that it was really hard not to buy anything. I saw a leather jacket and I had been looking for one for a while, but it was out of my budget despite the discount. I then saw some nice bags, but I already have too many bags. So I ended up with only a t-shirt. I need to get a hiking bag for my hiking trip next month. Which shop would you recommend? There is a big shop selling all sorts of bags and I saw some hiking bags. You should check that shop out. It is located on the second floor. Take the first escalator nearest to the main entrance and you will see Isatan on your left. Walk further up and the shop is on your right. The name of the shop is Bag a Bag. You won't miss it, as it is right between Smiggles and Universal Travelers. I will go there to check out the bag. Thank you. Now, you will listen to the recording again. Hi Ben, I heard that you went shopping at the new mall yesterday. Are all the shops open for business yet? Yes, I was told that the new mall is the biggest one in the Klang Valley, so I wanted to check it out. Most of the shops are already open, except for about two or three shops which are still under renovation. You should visit this new mall. The decorations are fantastic. There was a large crowd though, but the mall is very spacious, so it was still good to walk around. I enjoyed window shopping there, as there are quite a variety of shops. The new mall is a distance away from your house. Did you drive there? I hate the hassle of getting a parking spot, so I didn't drive there. I thought of taking the LRT initially, but my classes ended later than expected. So, instead of spending time walking to the LRT station and waiting for the LRT, I took a Grab car instead. Knowing you, I'm sure you did more than just window shop. 
What did you buy? There were so many sales and opening promotions that it was really hard not to buy anything. I saw a leather jacket and I had been looking for one for a while, but it was out of my budget despite the discount. I then saw some nice bags, but I already have too many bags, so I ended up with only a T-shirt. I need to get a hiking bag for my hiking trip next month. Which shop would you recommend? There is a big shop selling all sorts of bags, and I saw some hiking bags. You should check that shop out. It is located on the second floor. Take the first escalator nearest to the main entrance, and you will see Isatan on your left. Walk further up, and the shop is on your right. The name of the shop is Bag a Bag. You won't miss it, as it is right between Smiggles and Universal Travelers. I will go there to check out the bag. Thank you. That is the end of exercise two. Listen to a talk by a successful actress talking about her experiences in the entertainment world. As you listen, choose the correct answer for questions one to four. You now have thirty seconds to look at the questions. Now listen carefully and choose your answers. Hello, everyone. My name is Juliana. I feel so honored to be invited by your college to share with you my experiences as an actress. I was here as a judge for your drama night last year, and I still remember all your amazing plays. Many of you have natural talent for acting. And I'm sure there are some of you who have dreams of becoming actors and actresses. I had never dreamt of becoming an actress. After leaving school, I pursued my studies in this college, and I did my degree in journalism at the University of Kuala Lumpur. Upon graduating, I worked as a newscaster for TVB. I then wanted to do something more challenging, so I took up some acting classes. I found that I enjoyed acting, and when I was offered the chance to play a supporting role in a drama series, I left my job as a newscaster to fully concentrate on a career as an actress. I was wrong in thinking that being an actress was easy. Being an actress is not only about constantly polishing my acting skills; it is also about building rapport with everyone on the set. To some, that may sound like fun, but I'm really not sure how genuine a friendship could be in the entertainment circle, as everyone needs to network for personal gains. However, I find the long hours the most challenging. It is very tiring, especially outdoor shooting under unfavorable weather. I have learned a lot in my journey as an actress. I need to learn to take good care of myself. The exhaustive, irregular hours with irregular meals can take a toll on my health. Most of the time, we cannot just take a sick leave and rest at home. So, I make sure that I get enough rest whenever I can. I also pay particular attention to the type of food that I eat. I would say being an actress is not easy, but At the end of the day, it is a satisfying job. I'm sure that you will be able to face all these challenges if you have a strong passion for acting. Now you will listen to the recording again. Hello, everyone. My name is Juliana. 
I feel so honoured to be invited by your college to share with you my experiences as an actress. I was here as a judge for your drama night last year and I still remember all your amazing plays. Many of you have natural talent for acting and I'm sure there are some of you who have dreams of becoming actors and actresses. I had never dreamt of becoming an actress. After leaving school, I pursued my studies in this college and I did my degree in journalism at the University of Kuala Lumpur. Upon graduating, I worked as a newscaster for TVB. I then wanted to do something more challenging, so I took up some acting classes. I found that I enjoyed acting and when I was offered the chance to play a supporting role in a drama series, I left my job as a newscaster to fully concentrate on a career as an actress. I was wrong in thinking that being an actress was easy. Being an actress is not only about constantly polishing my acting skills. It is also about building rapport with everyone on the set. To some, that may sound like fun, but I'm really not sure how genuine a friendship could be in the entertainment circle as everyone needs to network for personal gains. However, I find the long hours the most challenging. It is very tiring, especially outdoor shooting under unfavorable weather. I have learned a lot in my journey as an actress. I need to learn to take good care of myself. The exhaustive irregular hours with irregular meals can take a toll on my health. Most of the time, we cannot just take a sick leave and rest at home. So, I make sure that I get enough rest whenever I can. I also pay particular attention to the type of food that I eat. I would say being an actress is not easy. But at the end of the day, it is a satisfying job. I'm sure that you will be able to face all these challenges if you have a strong passion for acting. That is the end of exercise 6. Listen to three students, Koxing, Lila, and Hakim, talking about the benefits of working while studying. For questions 1 to 3, Choose from the list A to E, the main benefit that each speaker believes in. Use the letters only once. There are two extra options, which you do not need to use. You now have 15 seconds to look at the questions. Now listen carefully and choose your answers. Student 1. Coxing. Only once you have carried your own water will you learn the value of every drop. This adage is as true for water as it is for money. You probably might agree that money gained freely is often spent lavishly. However, when you have to put in several shifts to earn the money, you will be more inclined to be cautious with your funds. Moreover, when you regularly associate yourself with adults who manage their resources prudently, this mindset will rub off on you. It could be priceless in the long run to learn financial management at a time when your peers are irresponsible with their expenditure. Student 2. Leela Soft skills are intangible but often desirable qualities sought by certain forms of employment that do not depend on acquired knowledge. These skills include common sense, good communication, creativity, and decision-making. For the most part, soft skills come naturally. However, your time at a job also gives you the opportunity to nurture these skills. First, it is important to realize how crucial these skills are in the real world. Then, you will need to sharpen them 
before getting your first real job. By that time, you will come to realize how highly in demand soft skills are, both in the job market as well as in the business world. Student 3. Hakim. Your big break may lie in the hands of a connection that you make at your workplace. The networking opportunity that the job affords is one of the biggest benefits of working while still in school. Your position becomes the platform to showcase your potential and endear yourself to your bosses and colleagues. They become your valuable connections. Long after your sting with them, these solid connections can be drawn upon for advice, direction, and recommendations. If you are fortunate to get a job within your area of career interests, then the connections that you make there could be the launch pad for your career after you graduate. Now you will listen to the recording again. Student 1. Coxing. Only once you have carried your own water will you learn the value of every drop. This adage is as true for water as it is for money. You probably might agree that money gained freely is often spent lavishly. However, when you have to put in several shifts to earn the money, you will be more inclined to be cautious with your funds. Moreover, when you regularly associate yourself with adults who manage their resources prudently, this mindset will rub off on you. It could be priceless in the long run to learn financial management at a time when your peers are irresponsible with their expenditure. Student 2, Leela. Soft skills are intangible but often desirable qualities sought by certain forms of employment that do not depend on acquired knowledge. These skills include common sense, good communication, creativity, and decision-making. For the most part, soft skills come naturally. However, your time at a job also gives you the opportunity to nurture these skills. First, it is important to realize how crucial these skills are in the real world. Then, you will need to sharpen them before getting your first real job. By that time, you will come to realize how highly in demand soft skills are, both in the job market as well as in the business world. Student 3. Hakim. Your big break may lie in the hands of a connection that you make at your workplace. The networking opportunity that the job affords is one of the biggest benefits of working while still in school. Your position becomes the platform to showcase your potential and endear yourself to your bosses and colleagues. They become your valuable connections. Long after your sting with them, these solid connections can be drawn upon for advice, direction, and recommendations. If you are fortunate to get a job within your area of career interests, then the connections that you make there could be the launch pad for your career after you graduate. That is the end of exercise 9. Listen to an interview between a host and a specialist named Dr. Allen about caring for autistic siblings. As you listen, choose the correct answer for questions 1 to 4. You now have 30 seconds to look at the questions. Now listen carefully and choose your answers. 
Good morning, Dr. Allen. Thank you for being here to share with us about caring for autistic siblings. It is my honour. This is a neglected area which I wish to bring public awareness to, as most of the attention has been placed on how parents should deal with autistic children. Yes, indeed. How would the siblings of an autistic child usually react when they first learn about their brother's or sister's condition? Well, as a sibling, learning that your brother or sister has autism can be a very difficult experience. You might have trouble understanding why your brother or sister acts in what seems to you to be strange ways. You may feel like your brother or sister gets more time and attention from your parents than you do and feel embarrassed about your brother or sister's behaviour when you are with friends or in public. Like at a store, where other people may stare at you or react negatively. I see. In that case, how could the relationship between siblings be handled? That is a good point. Research shows that the relationship between the siblings is very important. So, it makes sense that you will want to spend time together or want to help your autistic sibling. It is good to discuss with your parents the activities that you and your brother or sister can do together. It may take a little time and a lot of patience to learn how to interact or play with your brother or sister, but it will be worth it in the end. As you spend time with your sibling, it is likely that you will get to know him or her better and you will start to appreciate the differences between the two of you. The close relationship can have its upsides for both the typical and autistic siblings. A typical child may develop qualities such as maturity, patience, resilience, and empathy. For a child with autism who finds socializing a challenge, the bantering and bickering of siblinghood may provide a meaningful experience of friendship. All right, so how should we treat our autistic sibling? The best is to accept and understand your sibling. Do not judge. We all want our siblings to feel loved, accepted, and included. Do not jump to conclusions or blame our family members for the problem. Instead, we should support each other and even celebrate the incredible talents and uniqueness of our autistic sibling. Now you will listen to the recording again. Good morning, Dr. Allen. Thank you for being here to share with us about caring for autistic siblings. It is my honour. This is a neglected area which I wish to bring public awareness to, as most of the attention has been placed on how parents should deal with autistic children. Yes, indeed. How would the siblings of an autistic child usually react when they first learn about their brother's or sister's condition? Well, as a sibling, learning that your brother or sister has autism can be a very difficult experience. You might have trouble understanding why your brother or sister acts in what seems to you to be strange ways. You may feel like your brother or sister gets more time and attention from your parents than you do and feel embarrassed about your brother or sister's behaviour when you are with friends or in public. Like at a store, where other people may stare at you or react negatively. I see. In that case, how could the relationship between siblings be handled? That is a good point. Research shows that the relationship between the siblings is very important. So, it makes sense that you will want to spend time together or want to help your autistic sibling. It is good to discuss with your parents the activities that you and your brother or sister can do together. It may take a little time and a lot of patience to learn how to interact or play with your brother or sister, but it will be worth it in the end. As you spend time with your sibling, it is likely that you will get to know him or her better and you will start to appreciate the differences between the two of you. The close relationship can have its upsides for both the typical and autistic siblings. A typical child may develop qualities such as maturity, patience, resilience, and empathy. For a child with autism who finds socializing a challenge, the bantering and bickering of siblinghood may provide a meaningful experience of friendship. All right. So, 
How should we treat our autistic sibling? The best is to accept and understand your sibling. Do not judge. We all want our siblings to feel loved, accepted, and included. Do not jump to conclusions or blame our family members for the problem. Instead, we should support each other and even celebrate the incredible talents and uniqueness of our autistic sibling. That is the end of exercise 13. Listen to a promoter talking to a customer about a one-month breakdancing course. As you listen, choose the correct answer for questions 1 and 2. You now have 15 seconds to look at the questions. Now listen carefully and choose your answers. Hello, would you like to learn break dancing? Huh? He must be joking. I cannot dance at all. Well, we can make it possible for you. We have a one month break dancing course, especially for beginners. Wow, would I really be able to do break dancing after the course? Sure. However, as break dancing is a form of acrobatic dance that uses a dancer's entire body, fast footwork, and flips, spins, and poses that are synchronized to music, you should be fit in order to engage in this highly active dance. The good news is no prior dancing experience is required because our classes start slowly and build up to the more show-stopping moves. Will there be a personal instructor to guide me? Yes, there will. You will surely get the necessary attention and guidance as we take in only five students per class. The instructor will brief you on the steps and demonstrate the moves at the beginning of each class. Then, he or she will guide you through your practice session. You get to perform on stage at your graduation. I am afraid your charges might be too high for me. Well, our prices are reasonable. You only pay 200 ringgit for this 500 ringgit course, as we are doing a Merdeka promotion. This is only for the month of August. So, do grab the opportunity before the promotion ends. Excellent. I will give it a try. Please sign me up for the course. Now you will listen to the recording again. Hello, would you like to learn break dancing? Huh? He must be joking. I cannot dance at all. Well, we can make it possible for you. We have a one month break dancing course, especially for beginners. Wow, would I really be able to do break dancing after the course? Sure. However, as break dancing is a form of acrobatic dance that uses a dancer's entire body, fast footwork, and flips, spins, and poses that are synchronized to music, you should be fit in order to engage in this highly active dance. The good news is no prior dancing experience is required because our classes start slowly and build up to the more show-stopping moves. Will there be a personal instructor to guide me? Yes, there will. You will surely get the necessary attention and guidance as we take in only five students per class. The instructor will brief you on the steps and demonstrate the moves at the beginning of each class. Then, he or she will guide you through your practice session. You get to perform on stage at your graduation. I am afraid your charges might be too high for me. Well, our prices are reasonable. You only pay 200 ringgit for this 500 ringgit course, as we are doing a Merdeka promotion. This is only for the month of August. So, do grab the opportunity before the promotion ends. Excellent. I will give it a try. Please sign me up for the course.
That is the end of exercise seventeen. Listen to a conversation between Usha, a representative from Power Smart Fitness Gym, and Jason, a caller. As you listen, choose the correct answer for questions one and two. You now have fifteen seconds to look at the questions. Now listen carefully and choose your answers. Hello, Power Smart Fitness Gym. Usha speaking. How may I assist you? Hi, I would like to inquire about your martial art classes. Thank you for your interest. You can join our Muay Thai classes. A walk-in entry for one class will cost you fifty ringgit, or you can choose to pay three hundred ringgit a month for full access to unlimited classes, full usage of the gym. And use of facilities such as the sauna and showers. That sounds good, but I am not interested in Wi-Fi. Do you have any other martial art classes? Yes, we definitely do. We have kickboxing, silat, boxing, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You can join our platinum membership for five hundred ringgit a month, and you can attend any classes as you wish. Oh, I don't think I would be able to cope with so many. Is the silat class available at all your branches? I'm afraid that our silat classes are only available at a few selected branches. Where do you live? I am from Subang Jaya. Do you have silat classes at your headquarters in Pataling Jaya? I'm sorry, we do not have silat classes at our headquarters. Our branch nearest to Subang Jaya that offers silat classes is in Setia Alam. It is about twenty-four kilometers away from Subang Jaya. That is good. I work in Setia Alam, and I can drop by after work. Can I register now, or do I need to go to the branch personally for registration? I can send you the registration form and the schedule for the silat classes. May I know your full name and email address, please? My name is Jason Chin Wai Pong. My email is wpchin at hotmail dot com. Okay, I will email you now. Thank you for calling. Thank you. Now you will listen to the recording again. Hello, Power Smart Fitness Gym. Usha speaking. How may I assist you? Hi, I would like to inquire about your martial art classes. Thank you for your interest. You can join our Muay Thai classes. A walk-in entry for one class will cost you fifty ringgit, or you can choose to pay three hundred ringgit a month for full access to unlimited classes, full usage of the gym, and use of facilities such as the sauna. And showers. That sounds good, but I am not interested in Wi-Fi. Do you have any other martial art classes? Yes, we definitely do. We have kickboxing, silat, boxing, and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You can join our platinum membership for five hundred ringgit a month, and you can attend any classes as you wish. Oh, I don't think I would be able to cope with so many. Is the silat class available at all your branches? I'm afraid that our silat classes are only available at a few selected branches. Where do you live? I am from Subang Jaya. Do you have silat classes at your headquarters in Pataling Jaya? I'm sorry, we do not have silat classes at our headquarters. Our branch nearest to Subang Jaya that offers silat classes. Is in Setia Alam. It is about twenty-four kilometers away from Subang Jaya. That is good. I work in Setia Alam, and I can drop by after work. Can I register now, or do I need to go to the branch personally for registration? I can send you the registration form and the schedule 
for the select classes. May I know your full name and email address, please? My name is Jason Chin Wai Pong. My email is wpchin at hotmail.com. Okay, I will email you now. Thank you for calling. Thank you. That is the end of exercise 18. Listen to a conversation between two students, Zara and Ryan, discussing their college project. As you listen, choose the correct answer for questions 1 and 2. You now have 15 seconds to look at the questions. Now listen carefully and choose your answers. Hi Ryan, let's discuss our project. It is due soon. Hi Zara, sure. I think we will make a presentation on the usefulness of the atlas. What do you think? Hmm, do people still need atlases when we have Google? How do we use atlases, by the way? That is exactly my point. People nowadays, especially youngsters like us, are not familiar with the atlas. We need to tell our friends about what an atlas is for. Well, you have a good point. Okay, let's do it. Now, let's list the usefulness of the atlas. One thing for sure, it is a good source of information as it shows us the five different continents and their surrounding seas and oceans. We can also know about countries at the same latitude that usually experience the same kind of climate and weather. For example, Miami, which is one of the states in the United States of America, shares the same latitude as Saudi Arabia. So we can say that they have similar climates. Yes, and let's not forget that some atlases offer information on the location of cities, towns, lakes, and rivers in a country. Oh, and also mountains. I missed that. It's okay. We should add that main roads and railway lines are also shown on the maps of the countries and cities. And all this information is presented in different colors. I think we have enough information for now. If we have something else later, we can add it to our list. I will start doing the draft for our PowerPoint presentation. Good idea, Zara. While you are doing that, I will find more information on this. It is good that we are doing this. I learned quite a lot about the Atlas. Yes, me too. That is exactly my point. People nowadays, especially youngsters like us, are not familiar with the Atlas. We need to tell our friends about what an atlas is for. Well, you have a good point. Okay, let's do it. Now you will listen to the recording again. Hi Ryan, let's discuss our project. It is due soon. Hi Zara, sure. I think we will make a presentation on the usefulness of the atlas. What do you think? Hmm, do people still need atlases when we have Google? How do we use atlases, by the way? That is exactly my point. People nowadays, especially youngsters like us, are not familiar with the atlas. We need to tell our friends about what an atlas is for. Well, you have a good point. Okay, let's do it. Now, let's list the usefulness of the atlas. One thing for sure, it is a good source of information as it shows us the five different continents and their surrounding seas and oceans. We can also know about countries at the same latitude that usually experience the same kind of climate and weather. For example, Miami, which is one of the states in the United States of America, shares the same latitude as Saudi Arabia. 
so we can say that they have similar climates. Yes, and let's not forget that some atlases offer information on the location of cities, towns, lakes, and rivers in a country. Oh, and also mountains. I missed that. It's okay. We should add that main roads and railway lines are also shown on the maps of the countries and cities, and all this information is presented in different colors. I think we have enough information for now. If we have something else later, we can add it to our list. I will start doing the draft for our PowerPoint presentation. Good idea, Zara. While you are doing that, I will find more information on this. It is good that we are doing this. I learned quite a lot about the atlas. Yes, me too. That is exactly my point. People nowadays, especially youngsters like us, are not familiar with the atlas. We need to tell our friends about what an atlas is for. Well, you have a good point. Okay, let's do it. That is the end of exercise nineteen. That's all for today's lesson. Thank you. Subscribe the Explorer for more lessons. Have a nice day.